What's new in Medisoft version 22? Just in case if you don't know what version you're using and you want to find out, uh, one of the easiest way is to click on help and about. And this feature usually work with any software that has the help button and when you could do help about, doesn't matter what software, it usually tell you what version. And over here is we have version 22. So let's go over what's uh, the new uh, exciting items on version 22. In any of the Medisoft versions, there will be a new in this version. And this is just gives you a nice layout and a description of all the new features. So you can print this or you can just look at it on the screen. Uh, so we're going to cover most of this. One of my favorite feature is the AR tracker. So this is a brand new uh, um, feature that they revamped the whole the old uh, AR tracker. I can filter for what I'm looking for, so I can be looking for. So let's talk about in, in most practices they usually print a, an an aging report and and I see in most practices aging report that is over 500 pages and it's very cumbersome and sometimes they don't want to. Uh, to cover certain days or certain years because they inherited a mess from a billing company or or the billing company inherited a mess from uh, uh, a practice. So uh, this is the electronic version instead of printing a report. This is a smart drill down uh, system. Over here I can pick to get an aging either for the insurance or the patient. If it's for the insurance I get to pick between primary, secondary or tertiary. I can uh, start the level by provider. So I have selection here. I can pick the date range that I'm looking for. I can pick an insurance uh, company or a class. I can pick a particular patient or a guarantor. So there's so many different selections here. But if you see yourself that you're tweaking this a lot, you can actually give it a name and save it. So this way you can recall that query so it always remember how you want it to always search. If I leave everything blank, other than just primary here and insurance here, it's going to just apply this for me. And in this practice, I only have one provider. So I have provider John Smith and uh, the provider John Smith I have here, I can, drill, I can do this in two different ways. I can either drill down, now watch those buttons here. So right now I'm on all providers. If you have more providers, you will see a list of all your providers here. When you drill down, you see that you move to the all insurance button. I could have also done it just like that. And doesn't matter if you click on this or you double click on that. I can sort here by aging amount. Maybe this is my highest aging. I want to look at my AMA, uh, AMA group. And this is just shows me all the patient with the Emery group. Notice here that insurance Emery group here is showing all the patient. Then if I drill down on Christopher and over here I, I have the chart number for Christopher. I have the claim number. I have the, the date of service. Um, and I can actually do more features either on top or the bottom. So on top, each one of this line changes the claim number at the bottom. So this here, this charge here happened on 11, 20, 2015. This one here happened at the same day, but different claim number. This one has two charges. So now if you right click your mouse, there's a lot of options here. One of the options is I can add an AR node to the claim. So I can just type, I can add something like that. Now you notice that note here. So that created a note for me. I can also I can also do an AR task. The aging I can have an I can assign a task, or I can remove a task. Assigning a task, maybe I want to delegate this to, to another person, and I want them to rebuild this claim, and assign it to who, and hit assign, and the you know pick the due date. I can I can assign this a task. I can resend claim, assign it to a person and change the date and hit assign. You can assign to the claim or to the patient. If I assign it to the claim, I get to choose claim related AR stat. If I assign it to the patient, I can have a patient say that they want the collection. Or whenever you assign an AR task to a patient, it, it will follow that patient 
uh, for example, if I schedule this patient, so let me go to schedule. So Christopher schedule here and notice that there's an AR status collection. Now how to add those um, AR status or AR task? They are located in the list view here. And if you go to list, then you have here your AR status code and you can just add or edit here. They were not consistent where F8 or right click and insert new, uh, it, it doesn't work. Uh, they they f look like they missed it. Uh, so it's not consistent with most of the fields in MIDI software. For example, uh, in MIDI software, always when you want to add something new, you can do here, you can do F8 or new. Uh, and when the AR uh, listed, that doesn't work that way. So if I, if I was assigning an AR status and I want to add one, the F8 or right click does not work. Uh, for example, over here, let's say normally it will you right click here and do new, but that feature does not work with the new features in 22. Uh, so this is the AR status. I also can add the AR task. So when you're doing an AR task, you get to pick. You get to pick if it's a uh, patient related. So when you do an AR status, uh, you get to pick between if it's a claim related, statement related, or patient related. But if you are adding an AR task, that is just something that for you to work. Now they also added uh, permission in the grid. So there is there is a new section on AR task and AR tracker uh, and AR status. So those are all new security features that you can tweak if you don't want somebody to have access to the AR task or track. Also, when um, the beauty about the using the AR tracker is it's going to drill down to the claim. So if you have a claim, you have a new tab here that says the AR management and the AR management, it's giving you the note that I added when I was assigning or updating the status. So this way it's easy for somebody to just look at a claim and filter for claim ranges and find out what happened with them. And you have the history here. Just be careful. If you ever delete that claim for whatever reason, this uh, that you will lose the history of that. So uh, you want to be careful of that. You never, you never want to delete claims. You always um, want to uh, notice here when you click list only. Uh, this here is not supposed to show you if it's done. So if a claim was done after it's paid, uh, it will disappear from the list. If you turn this off, then that will show you all the done claims. So I see a lot more claims here. Uh, than if I would have excluded the done, which is most people want to exclude the done, they don't want to see. But never clean up this list thinking that you're doing a spring cleanup or anything like that. Now I'm going to open a, a different practice that has more than one provider, just show you the different. So if I open a practice here, I'm going to open this practice right there. And uh, I don't have security on this practice, so I'm not going to be able to assign a task to a person. But uh, uh, let me just show you what I'm trying to show you here. And over here is uh, if I run this filter here, now it shows me multiple provider and I can narrow down, I can sort. Uh, and uh, notice here that also give you the unbuilt one. So if you haven't built something, you will show your pocket for the unbuild. I can sort by the AR total and I can just drill down just like that. Okay, so if I would assign a task here, I'm not gonna, I don't see anything here because I didn't add any codes in this particular practice. Um, any other practice I did add. Uh, and over here, if I right click, I can edit the transaction and editing the transaction just that takes you to the transaction data entry screen. If I assign an AR task because I don't have security, if I assign an AR task, I don't see code, but I also don't see an assigned person because I don't have security in this practice. Another great feature uh, in version 22 
is uh, adding CPT codes. So uh, uh, especially in 2018, they, there's a lot of CPT code that were added and uh, version 22 makes it simpler for you. So to do that, there's two ways of doing it. I can actually get into the procedure code list from here. And if I hit new, I would see a link here say find CPT. So I can actually search for the CPT that I want. It depending on what specialty you're doing for. Let's say if you're doing a pathology and you're in analysis and I can take a code here by just double click on it. I was able to add this, then just hit save. And you just added this. Uh, another way of doing it is adding multiple codes at the same time. Um, and just be careful, you just have to add the price. So if you, if you don't have a price, you need to go here and you just need to put the price. Uh, another way of adding codes is adding them in bulk. So if I do add CPT code, I get to choose, I get to search or I get to choose a category. So let's say uh, I'm doing evaluation management and I want to add the whole group. So if I do this and I hit OK, I just added this whole group all in one shot. So that again, there is no prices. You need to go back and add those prices. Um, and it, it will ignore any duplicates. So if you already have a 99212, it's not going to duplicate it. It will override it. So this is a great feature, especially in 2018, as many CPT code were added to us. <music>